Good evening and welcome to the smoking section. Today my guest is Kim Courtney, who's running for Cambridge City Council, and she's running on the same platform as Xavier Dietrich. Now, Kim, uh, City Council elections are on November 3rd. Correct. So that's coming up soon. Yes, just a few weeks. That's right. So I can't believe the time has gone so quickly. <laughs> um, and I know tonight we wanted to talk um, actually a lot about the actual process of voting and hopefully try to explain that process to our viewers a little bit more. I know that Cambridge has a system called uh, proportional representation voting. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. And I'm, I'm not, I'm myself, I'm not very familiar with this process. So it would be great if we could talk a little bit about how that works, look at what the ballot looks like. Right. Um, I know that there's um, there's 23 candidates um, running. Is that correct? That's for nine right. Seats on the council. Correct. Okay. That's right. Great. Yep. So we're here today not really to talk about the campaign. We're we're here more to talk about how to vote. Mm -hmm. And the right. reason why I thought this was really important is because during my campaign, I've encountered a lot of people who have been voting for decades mm -hmm. that still don't understand how to vote. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. They're voting every time right. and they still don't really understand why they're picking different people and how many people they should pick. Right, right, right. Um, so I thought that this would be a great topic. Um, also looking at the numbers, crunching the numbers, realizing right. that it actually can make a big difference in an election how many people you vote for. That's an interesting point. And, you know, I, I am actually, I have, I'll just disclose, I'm not a resident of Cambridge, so I've been walking around Cambridge the last few weeks seeing posters, and I noticed everyone puts, you know, put me as number one or, mm -hmm. or vote number one. Right. So that was kind of my first clue that, that actually there's a, a little bit of a different system here for voting. Right. So Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, right. So... Let's get started. So in the last mm -hmm. election in 2013, mm -hmm. we have 107,000 Cambridge residents okay. and only 17,000 people voted. Wow, that's a really small proportion. So that's yeah. a small number deciding who is going to run our city. Um, the goal would be to get more people interested and mm -hmm. out there to vote. Um, but today we'll talk about how we can make each person's vote count right. a little bit better. Right. And Potentially. Also, it seems like explaining the process might also make people maybe maybe more willing or more able to, to go vote, more less intimidated by the process. Maybe. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, so what we've done with our materials to help out mm -hmm. is um, you may get one of these brochures on your door, hopefully. We're sending out quite a few. And we have inside these voter cards, and you remove them and they have a list of the 17 candidates who great. are um, running against the majority, um, the unity slate of seven who That's are great. incumbents. Okay. Um, and what you do is you can take this card and you can research all of your candidates, all of these um, 17 candidates, mm -hmm. and you can rank them and take this card with you in your wallet to make it easy to vote. Perfect. Should we take a look at the card here? Or? Yeah, okay. okay. That'd be great. Perfect. So Kim has brought an example card, a sample card with her tonight. Um, and this, this shows all the, the 16 candidates who are not incumbents. Um, uh, 16. Right? I'm 16. sorry. Did I say 17? I meant 16. I, guess right. I, I was just looking at my notes and I thought, is this something I made a mistake. Oh, no. You're right. There are 16, 16, 16 yeah. on this card. And these are, two of them are incumbents. There's um, Dennis Carlone and um, Nadine Mazin. Oh, I see. Okay. Those two are incumbents. And then the other seven that are missing from mm -hmm. the 23 are the Unity Slate members right. that have... Um, have come together as right, a majority right, um, right. to try and maintain their majority. Right. So these are the challengers to mm -hmm. try and get a new majority. Okay, perfect. So as you see here, um, you, this is an example, obviously. These are listed in alphabetical order, mm -hmm. which is what you will see on your um, ballot, that, but the ballots will rotate to have a different person first randomly. So um, it'll be alphabetical, but it will um, shift. I see, so as not to give anyone the advantage of being Exactly, the first, yeah. so that can make it confusing for people because you don't know mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. who's gonna be listed first. Right. Um, so I've listed them here in alphabetical order. And for example, if you were to vote number one for me, and <laughs> Number yeah. two for Xavier right. Dietrich. A good choice. Just as an example. Yeah. Um, then what you would do is you would research each of these candidates mm -hmm. and then put a number next to each one. I recommend that you start by crossing off any that you feel are mm -hmm. not qualified for the position as city councilor. Okay. And then you um, rank the ones that are remaining yeah. that you feel could do the job. Yeah. Because if you cross off people that you think could do the job, mm -hmm. you might end up with too few, right. and then your vote could not count, and we'll explain that uh, okay. a little more detail okay. um, in a minute. So Sounds I good. think that's, um, that that's great, and if anyone wants one of these voter cards that didn't get it on their door, mm -hmm. you can go to the website, um, CourtneyDietrich.org, 
um, slash voter cards, and okay. you can download them and print them out and cut them up. Right. Or you can make your own list and stick it in your wallet. Sounds good. So, so to be clear, this is really just a reference that you would bring with you into the voting booth in order to help you um, remember what your choices are. That's right. So you, so you don't have to remember right. 17 names, right. 16 names, right. 23 names, however right. many you're going to vote for. Right. And I recommend that you mm-hmm. vote at least for nine, mm-hmm. since we have nine city councilors. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we can, we can move on and I can explain... Why it's important that you vote deep, right? So that's that's an interesting question because we have you know we have really twenty three total candidates, only nine seats on the council. It does sort of boggle the mind as to how you know how do we begin ranking people? How many people should we vote for? Right, right. So if you um, vote, um, so one of the tricks about why you should vote for more Mm -hmm. numbers is that let's say for example you just vote for one or two candidates yeah when you're let's let's say you only have two candidates you feel strongly about right you really want those two to get in and you don't know much about the others or you just don't want to vote for anyone else right if you only put those two candidates when your ballot gets pulled um it's possible that the first candidate is already elected Mm -hmm. because they might actually have enough votes before your ballot's Mm -hmm. pulled so they might already be in right and then the um the other possibility is that possibly um, the second person um, might uh, already be eliminated? Yeah, right, right? right. So if the second person, is, if the first person is already elected mm-hmm. and the second person is already eliminated, mm-hmm. now um, your ballot has no third person. I see. So that ballot actually literally doesn't get counted. Ah, I see. Very interesting. So that's why it's better for you to list more people because you're only voting for one mm-hmm. person. Right. You're not voting for all the people that you're ranking. Right. But you don't know which one. That's true. So, yeah. if you if you vote one through ten, it's possible that your number one would be the mm-hmm. one that counts on your specific ballot. Right. It's also possible that the number ten would be uh, the one that gets counted. I see. And it would be really unfortunate. And this happens. Yep. In fact, um, we have some statistics here from the last election. Um, Logan Leslie um, had two hundred votes that were um, about two hundred votes that were essentially lost because there was nobody listed um, after, oh, right? Wow. So okay. th- those people that voted, um, their ballots didn't end up counting for somebody, oh, wow. right? Yep. So so that's an unfortunate situation. Mm-hmm. So that's how that works. And we can show them, if you'd like to show them the, um, sure. the sample ballot. Okay. I'll just pull that up. Which is fabulous. I just discovered today that the Election Commission actually issued um, an official um, specimen ballot for the City Council election coming up. Perfect. And this has everybody listed. Okay, so this is, what an actual, this is what an actual ballot's going to look like. Right. Okay. So we have everyone listed in alphabetical order. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, they will be rotating. Mm-hmm. Um, so Benzen will slide down and the bottom mm-hmm. person, James Williamson, will go up, okay. right? Um, so you don't know what you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. As you see, there are um, circles to the right. So there's rows and then there's columns. Mm-hmm. You wanna make sure that you don't um, circle in. You're gonna you know, do it like a test, right? right like yeah, a pencil. Yeah, multiple, yeah, you wanna, you wanna make sure you don't <laughs> <clears throat> circle in. <laughs> more than one per row right. and one per column. I see, okay. And you're not obligated to vote for everyone. Mm-hmm. You can vote for however many you want, mm-hmm. um, but you should vote for anyone that you feel would be qualified for the position. Mm-hmm. And you should also be careful not to vote for anyone that you feel you don't want in. Ah, Some okay. people have said things right. to me like, I am going to penalize that person by putting them at the end. Ah, so I'm going to vote right. 1 through 23, and that person is going to get a 23. I can see. I can understand making that mistake. Yep. Yep, yep. So you know what actually happens there mm-hmm. is that person might actually get elected because you put them because down. Because you put them on the You're effectively putting them into the running by doing that. Right, right potentially. In this, in this and that's system. pretty low, and the odds of a, tw- of a number 23 ever getting counted are pretty right. slim. I right. think they might be very slim. But... Um, the, the theory, that's the theory behind mm-hmm. it. You, you don't want to list anyone that you don't want to be elected. Okay. All right. So, um, for example, if you're not interested in voting for the unity slate, mm-hmm. then you would just leave those seven just off. leave those names off, yep. And actually, another point while we still have this up, um, interesting, is that they say candidate for re-election next to the current city councilors. Ah, I see, yep. So if you were, for example, really unhappy with the current city council and you just wanted to vote for no current city councilors, 
then you don't need to bring in the voter card at all. <laughs> you, can right. just, you, can, you can just not vote for anyone that has that next to their yeah, name, right, and right. you could vote for everyone else, right, right, right. Um, for example. Yeah. But I, I still think, even in that case, I still think the voter card might be useful because it would still help you with your ranking. Because just looking at this ballot, it seems like it would it'd be easy to get confused and putting, you know, maybe putting more than one in the same column or the same row. So, yeah, I've yeah. heard stories. I haven't personally inspected any actual ballots, but I have heard mm -hmm. stories about um, all sorts of crazy things being seen, like, and, and a lot of them. Like, right. some people, they make little shapes. Or, <laughs> like, some people just, they, they do all number ones. Really? I'm not even sure what they would do with the ballot if you did that. Um, <laughs> probably not. It probably wouldn't it's count. Probably just disqualify <clears throat> them completely. Yeah, yeah, it probably wouldn't count. Right. Um, so I wanted to point out also that another thing that we have put on our website is a list of all the um, candidates, the the 16 okay. candidates. We have um, their CCTV candidate videos, um, ah. a link to them. Oh, great. And okay. we also have links to all of their um, contact information yeah. on their websites. Oh, perfect. So all 16 are listed there, and if you want to research them, mm -hmm. Um, that could be a great place to go. So that's again CourtneyDietrich.org Courtney and slash candidates. Perfect. Okay, great. That's great to know. So everyone at home can go and look, take a look at that. Um, and you know, I, as you said, I think using the, the voter card will be a great reference before the election. Something to keep with you and to use that to look up the candidates online, find out what you can about them. You know, it sounds like um, looking at this um, this proportional representation voting. It sounds like it's important to really research people. Because, because, you know, as you said, you really should put down anyone who you feel is qualified for the job. Correct. Right. As opposed to when you would normally vote, mm -hmm. and the person that wins is, is, looking, is seeking a majority. Right. 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 So you might just pick your guy right. or your gal, and right. you go vote for them, right. and you may research two or three people. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we really do have 23 candidates, right. um, you know, most of whom are, are pretty good contenders. Yeah. Right. Um, so I would definitely recommend researching mm -hmm. um, and reaching out to them. Yeah. Send them emails. With your questions. Yeah. yeah your Communicate comments. with them. Yeah. Ask them questions about the issues that, that are important to you. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we have lots of candidate forums where we're doing debate-like forums. They're not technically debates, but they're sort of like right. debates where the public can participate and submit mm -hmm. questions. Great. Um, so there's all sorts of opportunities to get to know the candidates. Perfect. I know there was just a CCTV forum the other night. Is that correct? Um, yes, it was the East Cambridge planning team. The East Cambridge planning team. Okay. And they yeah. did it in two separate events. Um, one was last night, and ours was um, last week, the one that we were on. Okay. And CCTV did um, did record those, oh, and okay. they're going to be televised. Perfect. And I'm sure that those are also archived on the CCTV website. So. Um, I believe so. Yeah. So you can take yeah. a look there. Um, I know that um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to mention just when we're talking about uh, the system of proportional voting and. Now, having to research other candidates, um, are there other candidates that you personally endorse or that you feel um, <clears throat> might have um, have similar agreement on issues to yours, or maybe even different different views on issues to yours, but you feel that would be worthwhile members of the council? Um, definitely. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm running with Xavier Dietrich. Right. We're sort of on a slate. We don't really call it a slate, right, but right. we're running together on the same issues. Um, seeking more transparency right. and accountability um, in in the city government and. Um, you know, we're unhappy with the, with the status quo. We're unhappy with the current council yeah. and, and its operations. So um, we are supporting the candidates who are seeking to, to do something different yeah. um, and better for Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So the seven Unity Slate members um, we're not supporting, and we're supportive of the mm -hmm. other 16 who are trying to um, gain a, a new majority in the right. council. Right. Um, so we're hopeful that that will happen, and the best way for that to happen is for people to get out November 3rd mm -hmm. and vote. Absolutely. And vote smartly, yeah. and vote deep, as many yeah. as many candidates as you as you as yeah. you want to, as many right. as you think are qualified for Absolutely. the job. Great, yep. perfect. And, uh, and so far in, in this election, have, have you been out talking to voters a lot in the city? And, and if so, what, what kind of concerns have you been hearing from voters? What, what's on their minds? Absolutely. Um, we're always out talking to voters. Yeah. We're campaigning every day. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the questions have to do with, um, there's a lot of um, unhappiness with the city councils. Um, I guess you could call it, um, they, they seem to dismiss a lot of public input. Mm -hmm. So people feel like they go to city council meetings and they stand up and yeah. they say things or they go to a planning board meeting or a license commission meeting or zoning and they speak against a project mm -hmm. or speak for something 
and um, a lot of people are feeling like their voices aren't really heard, right. um, like the decisions are being made and they're not really taking into consideration right. enough right. the public feedback. Yeah. And I think that's a really important um, issue and I think that um, the public should be considered and factored in into yeah. into any decision where that's a possibility. Definitely. I mean, I can I can I can understand that 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 concern because I think you know the fact that we can go to meetings and speak up and we can make our voices heard is is all well and good. But I think sometimes people get the sense that that it's not really making any kind of impact. And you know, I think there's a fine line to tread there. It's not that you you know it's not that they're always going to agree with you or make laws um, in accordance with what you've said. But right. still, there there should be some acknowledgement. I think there have that, been times when decisions have been made where yeah. there was overwhelming public opposition. Yeah. Right. And I think that's really when it gets. Yeah. Um, that's a good sign of that something's yeah. yeah not quite right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and have there been any, any surprises to you so far um, that people have spoken to you about issues you hadn't considered before? Um, well, there's all sorts of issues that are really um, important hot topics right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of discussion about planning. Um, you know, I'm not sure that any topics have surprised me, mm -hmm. um, but the planning one is big. We, yeah. we need a master plan for the city, yeah. and we really need to stop this piecemeal zone, mm -hmm. up zoning that we're doing. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the planning board and the city council have really been taking into consideration enough the city infrastructure mm -hmm. when they allow big projects to move forward. Yep. So um, if you have a big building that's being built that has new residents in it, you mm -hmm. have new vehicles, you have new pedestrians, more bicycles, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of factors you, you have to factor in. The, the, sewage, the sewage system right. and the, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. Um, and I think that the some of these decisions have been made too quickly, mm -hmm. and I think that it's time to slow that down mm -hmm. and um, work on the master plan mm -hmm. and really make smarter decisions about growth. Okay. And I think growth is good, and I think right. we should be building, mm -hmm. but I think we should be doing it smartly. Right, right, with more consideration, maybe also yeah. listening more to public input. Yeah. Right, I mean, there's a lot of long-term residents of Cambridge who can have very uh, insightful input, I would say, I would think. Yeah, um, right. So certainly, we have MIT and Harvard here. We have some of the brightest minds yeah. in the world. I would say so. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> right? definitely, definitely. We should make use of those yeah, great absolutely. minds. No, I am one hundred percent with you. Yeah. Um, there's a, another the other thing I wanted to bring up um, is the speaker circle in Cambridge because I know mm -hmm. that's something you've been involved with. Um, I believe this has been happening since the summer, since August. Um, I know that Mark Levy of the Cambridge Day initiated this um, just as a venue for right. freedom of speech in in Harvard Square. Um, and I, I think it's a really interesting idea, so I just wanted to ask you a little bit about that, about how you think um, citizens of Cambridge might be able to make use of such a such an initiative. I think it's yeah. a really interesting idea that Mark had, um, yeah. and I, apparently they do this in London, and it's right. been really popular. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think it's 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 always hard to get something started like this because it's hard to get enough people to know about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, the ones that I have attended, I, there have been a lot of really great speakers. Mm -hmm. There have been some people doing poetry, and mm -hmm. one person did some songs. And um, I think that it's an important thing to be able to speak yeah. publicly and say whatever it is that is important to you. Absolutely. Um, I'm yeah. sure you might be aware that Xavier and I spoke at a city council meeting on August 10th. Yes, I did hear about that. Yeah. We were cut off from mm -hmm. speaking um, simply, in our opinion, because right. the city council didn't like what right. we had to say. Right, absolutely. Um, there was nothing inappropriate about what we were saying, certainly not legally inappropriate. And, and it was also under the time limit, as I understand. We it. were within right. the, well right. within the time limit. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, in my opinion, inappropriate. They stopped the meeting yep. and they walked out of the room right. in the middle of Xavier's and they turned off the microphone on Xavier. And have you ever received any explanation from that um, or no. apology for that? No, no. I, I would look forward to that. Wow. I have not received yeah. a single comment from any right. any current city councilor. Wow, that's very con that's very concerning, I would say, mm -hmm. because yeah, that's really just not being allowed to speak. Exactly. Yeah, so, so um, you know, and the topic was criticisms of how the License Commission was functioning yeah. and how the chair was doing her job, mm -hmm. which I think those are fair criticisms, and if you can't make those criticisms, right. then where are we with, right. with our um, city government? Absolutely. So yeah. so the speaker circle is a, is a great venue where uh, things like that mm -hmm. won't happen. <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, so, you might argue that it's not necessarily a ground-shaking forum. It's not necessarily um, a forum that is affecting direct legislation or anything like that, but it's still a very important venue to have a place where people, anyone can speak, really. Sure, and um, it's no right, right in the heart of Harvard Square, right, right. at the T-Station. Right. A lot of people passing by, yeah. um, and I think it's been really interesting to Great. see so far. And that happens on, I believe, Sunday mornings? Is I that think that it's on Sundays at 11 a.m. Sundays at 11 a.m. 11 so to 12. If anyone in the audience is interested in stopping by, um, I'm sure anyone's welcome to speak. So I think so. Yeah. I think you can so. come and speak about anything you like. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, 
let's see. Um, oh, can I mention one thing that sure. I forgot about the no, voting? Absolutely. I was just looking at my notes and I realized and I left this out. Um, this is interesting data. So in the last election, 2013, the um, the spread of the bottom three candidates was incredibly close. Ah. So the um, the bottom three were from the highest count: um, Kelly, mm -hmm. Craig Kelly, Nadim Mazin, and then Dennis Carlone was at the bottom. Okay. Um, Kelly and Mazin were only separated by eleven votes. Mazin and Carlone were only separated by seventeen votes, and then Carlone and the person that was eliminated um, that did not get in Minka Van Buzikoff. She was separated by 20 votes. Wow. Um, according yeah. to my reading of the chart, which yeah. you know I'm, I may have misread mm -hmm. it, but that's right. my understanding. Wow. Um, so we're talking between 10 and 20 votes separated out the bottom three mm -hmm. and the person that got the person that didn't get in. Wow, that's amazing. So this yeah. is why yeah. it's incredibly important that people not only go vote, but right. vote in a way that they ensure that their vote will mm. count. Will count, so yeah. the vote is valuable. Right? right, right. Because that can make all the difference in the right. world mm -hmm. in, in who ends up on the council. Absolutely. So it's very important to research all the candidates, um, really you know, really educate yourself, it sounds like, um, mm -hmm. and really just and try, try to vote for 16 if you can, but rank them in order. That, vote for as many yeah. as you feel comfortable. Right, right. And if you really just want to vote for three, that's fine. But yeah. I, I want you to do that with the knowledge mm -hmm. of, of the fact that, that might, your, your ballot might not go towards somebody. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. You should do that by choice, though, not yeah. by accident. Absolutely. No, yeah. definitely. And I think this is really, um, I'm sure this has informed a lot of people because I had no idea that the system worked exactly that way. So it's very valuable information. Well, um, Xavier and I have taken a close look at this and <laughs> tried to understand it and you know it's kind of something insurmountable and right. almost impossible to explain yeah. which is why I'm not going into a lot of the details of how how the um, votes are sort of shifted mm -hmm. because um, I think that you know I wouldn't want to say the wrong thing. Right, right. Um, the process of how the votes are actually t calculated and tabulated afterwards is... Yeah, it's, right, yeah. right. It's, it's a difficult yeah. task to explain. I'm sure. So, yeah. um, and I will say that Mass General Laws, Chapter 54A Section 9 is where you can find the ah, actual law on good. this okay. and you can read it for yourself ah, and uh, know, I don't guarantee know. that I've explained it perfectly. <laughs> um, I've done my best. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and now just, I mean, since we have a little time left, um, I just want to turn a little bit more to the issue of smoking. Um, you know, just talk a little bit about your views. I know you've been on the show before. Um, you know, if you were elected to council, um, yeah, I, I know that the, the issue of smoking tobacco can be divisive and a difficult issue. Right. Um, you know, and I, I know that um, recently um, Cambridge just passed a, um, a, a patio ban and also a partial park smoking ban. Mm -hmm. They also just raised the age, um, the legal age by cigarettes to right, 21. Right, to 21. Um, so this is a lot of legislation that's recently passed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, um, you know, just anxious to hear your views about um, if you were faced with a, you know, particularly divisive issue such as smoking or particularly... Um, difficult issue. Um, you know, how, how would you treat it? Um, especially because I know that there were a lot of members of the public stood up and smoke to spoke about this issue. Um, you know, is that something that you feel you could work with other members on the council about when it comes to more particularly controversial issues? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, mm -hmm. it's critical to work with other members of the council. Definitely. I mean, that's how you really get things done. So, I, I could. I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. also critical um, to actually listen to what the public is saying. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think may uh, could have factored in more is there could have been better analysis of, of real data yeah. before making decisions. Right. I don't think that um, legislation should happen based on personal preferences. Right. I think there might have been a little bit of that in mm -hmm. here. Um, mm -hmm. I also think that you know limitation of personal liberties should not happen unless you're really, really, really sure that that's a necessity yeah. to keep the public right. safe. Right. Um, now, my understanding is that the, the outdoor smoking um, in patios mm -hmm. of restaurants only happened in, let's say, for example, 10 mm -hmm. or so um, restaurant patios. I think patios. it was less than that. I think it was, I, I want to say five, but I'm, I'm not sure okay. that figure, but it was very few. So yeah. to me, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound like a huge problem right. that we should be addressing. Right. Um, and, and also the business owners, when they had the right to choose, mm -hmm. they were mostly choosing not to have smoking. Right, that's true. So that's a yeah. really interesting phenomenon. You know, why not give the business owners the right to make that decision? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe in the business owners having the right to make that decision. That's and, and the customers having the right to decide if right. they want to go to a place where they can smoke on the patio. Well, that sounds like a win-win. It seems to me that when you're on the council, you know, one, one huge concern is obviously business owners, but also weighing the needs of business owners with the public. 
Mm-hmm. This to me sounds like a win-win. Um, so for both sides. So right. Right. So, I think so too, but that's not right. how they went. Right. Which yeah. is interesting. And right. the smoking yeah. age. Um, I, I think that it should not have been raised. I don't agree with raising the yeah. age. Um, I, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to yeah. me. I understand that we don't want young people to smoke, but <clears throat> there are people who are 18 mm-hmm. living here that already smoke. Right. And well, we have so many college students in Cambridge, which is obviously yeah, right. Obviously, a lot of people under the age of 21. So right. Yeah. 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 Who who are who are off to college, independent, making their own decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't seem to make much sense, but. Yeah. So I, I do overall, Xavier and I both actually um, support the smokers um, mm-hmm. in Cambridge and their their rights um, to to smoke freely mm-hmm. and not have those rights um, taken away from them mm-hmm. um, without significant data and significant mm-hmm. proof of harm to the public. Great. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I really thank you for that. Um, now, since we still have a little bit of time left, um, is there anything else you'd like to say about your campaign? Um, any... Uh, any things you're going to still be doing to gear up in the next couple of weeks? Um, gear up or gear down, whatever the case may be. <laughs> no, it's going to be nonstop until the yeah. election. Um, there's a lot happening. There are a lot of forums, um, mm-hmm. a lot of debates. Um, we're, we're sending out these materials, and uh, you know a lot of those are going out, so hopefully um, a lot of the viewers will, will get those. Perfect. Great. And um, in terms of the campaign in general, our platform is, you know, we feel that the city is... Not operating, not operating as it should. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a plan E charter, mm-hmm. and the plan E charter requires that um, the city council, who's voted in by the people, mm-hmm. um, make sure that the city is running properly. Mm-hmm. And when the city ma- <clears throat> when the city manager isn't taking charge and doing what he's supposed to do, mm-hmm. doing his role, mm-hmm. then the city council is supposed to step in. Yep. So the examples of how this is happening, a great example of this is Uber. Mm-hmm. So right now right. we have That's illegal businesses yep. operating in Cambridge. Mm-hmm. It's flat out against the law mm-hmm. for them to um, pick up someone for hire mm-hmm. in a private vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, they would need a taxi or a livery right. license. Right. So.